Welcome to System Shock 2. In this update, we will tackle the first portion of the UNN Rickenbacker. The UNN Rickenbacker is pretty much the starting point of the in-game portion of System Shock 2. The game gets a whole lot more linear at this point, there's also less reliance on scripted events, and it just instead throw a gauntlet of really hard encounters that you need to overcome. We arrived planetside via the shuttle on June 15th at 0800 hours. Kerenchkin was the first one out the door, never even bothering to do a level B hazard suit exam. Not wanting to let that little tri-op suit get a head start, Diego went right after him. We thought it was crazy, sending the senior officers of the Rickenbacker down to the surface of an uncharted body. But both those idiots were going to get all the glory for the UNN and tri-op they could. Damn. Time for inspection. More later. We must destroy the Von Braun. But before we can separate the Rickenbacker, we must remove the foul black eggs. The man, the many have has vomited on this deck. These eggs, these eggs are an experiment of the many, and will in time spawn the next generation of 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 Analid, which you will have no hope of destroying. Destroying. Steal yourself for a struggle, human. They fear you, for you are my avatar. Also, as I was showing the floor plan, or at least the general layout of the ship, you have noticed that we don't have any map for this portion of the ship, so from now on, you're gonna have to use all of your orientation. But don't sweat it, this entire part of the game is very linear. And yet, there's a whole bunch of turrets here. There's three of them, but none of them can see me because I'm invisible by now. And just in case that you wonder, this ability will dispel the second that you use a Psy ability or whenever you try to attack an enemy. Security system offline. Good. You have destroyed the first of the eggs, but there are 15 left. Find them. Thank you for the two cyber modules, Shodan. I'm definitely gonna need them. The eggs were lying in a semicircle in the middle of what looked like a crash crater. There were hundreds of those things, hundreds. As we got closer, you could hear them. Not the eggs, the things inside them. It was like music. I was scared out of my mind. But that music... All I wanted to do was see those things up close. Find out their secrets. Okay, it's almost as if Shodan felt bad for only giving me two cyber modules, so... Instead, we get 15 just by pushing a button that you need to press in order to progress on with the level anyway. So it's finally time to verify the claim of the many. Let's see a fight between flesh and machine. Unfortunately, it seems as if machine currently has the advantage. There we go. Now you see the main advantage that the flesh has over the machine is that there's way more of them. start by making sure so that all flesh and machine will now be destroyed for good. 
I really think that having the captain of the ship on our side is a boon considering all that we went through so far. Once again, it feels as if we're not that alone anymore. And by the way, you do need to destroy all of the eggs because while you're able to leave this map without destroying all of the eggs, there will be a door in two maps that you won't be able to open if you didn't destroy everything. Potential threat detected. Potential threat detected. Oh my god. It's been forever ever since I failed to hack an alarm and it happened in here of all places. Well, better steal myself for a struggle. Things are gonna get very ugly. So might as well max out our exotic weapon skills because we'll need the extra stopping power of the crystal shard. Now I can kill assassins with only two hits. Okay, I'm not really sure where you're going, but keep doing so because that'll definitely help me. The main reason why alarms are so threatening at this portion of the game is that while on earlier decks, all that alarms will spawn will be hybrids, monkeys, as well then protocol droids for the most part. Here they spawn giant spiders as well then cyborg assassins, which are two enemies that you usually don't want to mess around with because they're both very dangerous. And we have to deal with them for at least 50 more seconds. This was caused by an overload in the Mason acceleration coil. There is another coil in part two, which, which you must pass to get to the bridge of the Rickenbacker. If you approach it, the same will happen been there, but I have conceived a way to avoid this. Proceed to engine cell B. There I will provide you the benefits of my life missions. As you've just seen recently, you cannot take control of spiders though, which is kind of a bad thing. Oh shit. Yeah, see how quickly assassins can murder you if they have the chance? Yeah, it's a good thing that I have this powered armor because otherwise I would have died at least three times here. Oh, God damn it, stop moving already. This is really starting to get tense here. Yeah, the moment that fights with these enemies become range, I pretty much lose all advantage. Now that everyone is dead, we can finally see what Shodan wanted to talk us about. Essentially, she was warning us about an accelerated mason coil which was sabotaged and therefore this created a giant all breach inside the Rickenbacker. And this shield which is right here is the only thing that prevents the entire ship from being sucked into vacuum. And we must do something in order to make it so that it won't happen elsewhere on the ship. In order to reverse the gravitronic generators, I need to get into nacelle B. In order to get into the nacelle, I need my damn access card. But I left it on the opposite side of the hull breach. Wait a minute. If I can extend the auxiliary support struts, I could... If they've survived the blast, that is. In 2114, nobody could afford a barber. So that was what he was talking about. By pushing the switch, we've managed to extend one of the giant metal beams, but unfortunately, it's not long enough so that we can do the jump. Well, we could do so if we use a speed booster, but of course, you can be sure that there's a way provided to make it so that you can do the jump without. And finally, it's a good thing to ensure that we can do the jump without because falling into the vacuum shield will kill you instantly. After a couple of hours, it was, it was like being on a bender. Long periods that you couldn't remember. One minute we were in that crater, and the next minute we were loading up the shuttle with the eggs. I remember hearing the idiot Korenchkin calling the Von Braun and ordering them to clear off the entire hydroponics deck. Diego seemed to think this was strange and said, Are you crazy, Anatoly? And Korenchkin smiled and said back to him, Oh, Captain, we are not Anatoly. Also, see those grenades that are way over there. We'll get them sometime later thanks to her Psy powers. And now we've extended the beams so that we will be able to do the jump. 
And this ladder down here leads to the black egg that you must destroy, but I killed it before by using cryokinesis. Okay, I said that there was less scripted events, but there's still a couple of them all around the place. But they're less Promenian than they were into deck 4 and 5, for instance. Ah. Huh. Well, normally there's a cyborg assassin here, but where the hell is he? Okay, so I have no clue how he ended up here, but you have fun down here, I guess. Yeah, I have no clue why I'm even doing this. It's not as if he's in a position to kill anything. We have another fusion cannon over here, which is seemingly out of reach, but you're not knowing the Psy agent properly. Nothing is out of reach. Okay, fine. It's not as if I need the fusion cannon anyway. Alternately, you can use a speed booster, but you'll hurt yourself just doing the jump. But you can get a heavy suit of armor if you haven't got one already, and if you're able to equip it in the first place. Also, the fusion cannon that was over here is the best fusion cannon that you can get in the game because it's the best shape one of the entire game, because it has 5 points of durability, and yeah, that's the best you're getting for this one weapon. For some reason, the main gimmick with the heavy weapons is that almost all of them come in pitiful shape. And yeah, you can see how much damage the ship has taken here. You can just see other parts of the ship through the vacuum shield. And here we go, we have the access card in order to go to engine the cell B, which we were told about. And there's also another viral proliferator. On the opposite side, exotic weapons pretty much do the complete opposite than heavy weapons. They always all are into perfect shape, but there's never any ammo inside them, so if you already have one and you have the maintenance skill in order to keep it repaired, then don't bother with them. However, you need 4 points of maintenance in order to be able to repair them in the first place. <laughs> Okay, this is what I should have done in the first place, but instead I used the worst possible option that I have. Even the Viral Proliferator was a better choice for this situation than Cryokinesis. Ten eggs remain. remain. Move quickly. So since we bumped in the fusion cannon again some time ago, I figure it is time to finally talk about it. This is a weapon that gets a really bad rap, and, well, it's not really a bad weapon, but the thing with this gun is that, well... Oh my god, what the hell have I done? There was no reason for me to click there. You know what, fuck this. I don't care that I just wasted an auto repair unit, but I'm not gonna start such a dumb alarm because there was no reason for that to happen. And yeah, by the way, I'm gonna continue doing that if only because this adds far more tension to the game. So why does the fusion cannon get such a bad rap? Well, it's the final weapon of the heavy weapons tree, and yet it is weaker than the grenade launcher and nowhere near as versatile, because the fusion cannon only deals energy damage, which means that it's more powerful against robots, but against annelids and spiders just like these, it's less effective, so you have to shoot them even more. And yeah, just in order to create even more panic attacks, we now have partially invisible spiders. It's just like the Spectres, but even more threatening, because they cause poison damage inside you. Due to my melee abilities, I pretty much only use a Viral Proliferator from now on just in order to deal with swarms. Which is kind of weird in a way, but hey, we'll deal with it. Oh yeah, I totally forgot that my Crystal Shard deals extra damage. And here we have another new enemy, which is another kind of laser turrets. And these are by far the worst one of the bunch. At least they don't deal any splash damage whenever you kill them, so you can melee them if you want, whenever they're offline without killing yourself. 
So we just picked up the sixth and last friendship steam device that we will find in the game. So I use them in order to fully upgrade my laser pistol now that I know that I'll be able to fully upgrade the last weapon that I'll find in the game. The first upgrade on the laser pistol will increase the size of the battery and the second one will diminish the amount of energy it uses in order to fire shots. The first upgrade is especially useful if you decide to go all out energy weapon because it just means that you can shoot a whole lot more overdriven shots which really are helpful for destroying turrets in a hurry. <laughs> Here you've noticed that even when you're prepping yourself to swing your weapon, this is enough to cancel out your invisibility, so make sure that you prep yourself in order to hit enemies only whenever you're fully ready to go in the fight. And yeah, please forgive my lunacy here for a second, because I couldn't figure out where my high spec was for a second, which definitely is a little bit embarrassing, but don't worry, I'll find it in time. Hi there. Please make your while you rap. So with that replicator act, let's go and open up the final high security crate of the game. And yeah, this one has another fusion cannon, and this one is in rather poor shape, but at least you don't have to repair it. So these laser turrets are a whole lot more threatening because they deal a whole lot more damage, they don't make any kind of noise, and also as you've seen, they definitely track faster. But in a room like this, it's not really much of an issue. And finally, they've got as much health than every other turret that we've seen in the game. Do you think you can defeat us with your wire and steel? We offered you the ecstasy of our union, and you chose the vacuum of technology. of technology. Now, when you go into this one section, do yourself a favor and hack the security first, because I'm gonna show you the kind of ordeal that you have to go through whenever you don't do this. The way inside engine NSLB is filled with a whole lot of hazards, which include these dangerous turrets. The Rickenbacker turrets are also disappointing because they never give you anything. At least those ones. The other ones that we've seen previously into the game will continue giving us items, but not the new ones. Also, it's all about narrow corridors, so it's incredibly difficult to just avoid anything. Yeah, what I just said. And by the way, do I need to remind you how hard these turrets can hit? Even with my power armor, I still took over 10 damage. But something that I didn't know about the power armor until this playthrough was that it also protected you against energy weapons. Which definitely is a big thing considering that usually energy weapons will deal double damage to you, so it makes this armor even more powerful in that regard. Yeah, if you're wondering about the other health bar, that's because there's an egg here, and it's placed at the worst place ever. Destroy the last five of their eggs quickly. I tire of this exercise. Perhaps we judged you too hastily. We feel there is room for us to coexist. After all, we are both children of flesh. Why not join with us against the machine mother? So yeah, you ended up kicking our asses really badly, so yeah, congratulations, you passed our test. You are now eligible to join us. And unless I'm wrong, this is another rocket turret, so 
It's time for us to not take any chances again. This device will reverse the gravitronic generators in pod 2. This will prevent you from clumsily disturbing the overloaded Mason acceleration coil coil there. Now get back to your task, in ins insect. insect. The ship must be cleared, and my patience is dwindling. Get back to work, you useless piece of shit, because I'm tired of waiting for you to do all of the job. Okay, you push a button, good, here, have some 20 cyber modules, you are a good person. I can't help but notice that Shodan really has the most violent mood swings ever. It's like she cannot decide how to act whenever she's around you. So in the meantime, I'll finish up with the fusion cannon. A whole lot of people say it's a bad weapon and then outright just use it for cameras because, well, otherwise you'd have to waste a grenade on a camera and that's not exactly the smartest idea out there, but it's not really bad for the Rickenbacker because this weapon deals energy damage and a lot of the enemies here are mechanical, so this will be an effective weapon. But the thing is, in the end, this weapon doesn't do anything that the EMP rifle or even the grenade launcher cannot do. And this is why it's so disappointing. I mean, this is supposed to be the ultimate weapon of the tree. But with that said, this is your moment to use the fusion cannon because later in the game, it will become useless. Oh, uh, hello, uh, oh shit, that's exactly what you don't want to happen with a rumbler. See how easily he could have kicked my ass if I didn't have a power armor on? Yeah, if I had the kind of armor that a person with my strength will have, once again, I will have died. And that goes double if I didn't have any psi powers in order to protect me. Because the way the rumbler was set up, he was blocking all access. At this moment, I could not even move anymore. At least the one kind thing with rumblers in this game is that the game cannot spawn them willy-nilly on command. What did I think power was? What was my concept of joy? How empty life must have been. As I merge my body with the biomass, I begin to sense the borders of rapture. And yeah, for some reason they didn't even show up the right portrait here because, as you've seen with the audio logs previously, Courage Ken became a Psy Reaver on July 9th. But all in all, I'm really happy that this creep is dead. And yeah, say hello to a shitload of turrets. If security weren't turned off, that would have been a huge problem, but hey, at this point, it's just three more scraps of metal to whoever is involved. Also, make sure to not skip over this room too quickly, because as I'm trying to make my way around here, yeah, you can get the final high speed of the game. I got an audio log here, but I'll wait until Pyrofield is turned off before I can finally listen to it. And holy shit, what is up with this security panel? It closes the security for something like over 9 minutes. Oh well, at least I think that makes it so that I won't really feel bad about listening to audio logs as well than looting the place all over. We'll skip forward to when Pyrofield finally decides to stop. The worms are everywhere. Captain Diego is the one who let them in. Nobody knows who to trust anymore. Nobody's even sure who's human anymore. I've blown out the access ladders in the torpedo room to restrict access to pod 2. Let's hope that holds them back. As long as we're alive and drawing a paycheck from the Navy, those bastards are not getting the rigged marker. Simpson, Malone, Shandera, and Perez are dead. At least those are the ones we know for sure. Those bastards sabotaged the Mison acceleration coil. They blew out the entire driver core six subdecks. 
From what I can tell, somebody tapped the frequency resonator to refract human-sized movements. The overload of all those people moving around must have blown the resonator. We set up a magnetic shield and the ship's still functional. Barely. I've quarantined the entrance to pod 2. The secondary coil is right there and I don't know how thorough the son of a bitch who did this was. So I guess that was why Sho then made us reverse the gravity into that one place because for some reason this will make it so that the entire ship will blow up whenever we will go on there otherwise. So at this point, the Rickenbacker just becomes a very long stretch where you follow one route until you get to the very end of the road. At this point, there's no branching paths or no nothing. It's just a series of obstacles and enemy encounters that you have to go through in order to survive. Until I can reverse the Gravitronic Generators, we're effectively cut off from Pod 2. Wozchak's email said the only way to do that is by resetting the power grid from the access station in Engine Nacelle B. Of course, he didn't volunteer to do it himself. What a goddamn mess. Guess what we just did? Looks like we are way ahead of schedule for a change. So, yeah. In overall, this is one of the reasons why I don't really like the Rickenbacker. It's just very linear, and instead of the overt exploration that you had in the other deck, whenever you get to that point in the game, it just feels as if you're just playing some sort of shooter with really weird mechanics instead of the team of random exploration that we had in the past. This feels kind of like a departure from what defined the earlier portions of the game. One thing that I enjoy in the earlier portions of the game is that from one playthrough to the other, things will always change depending on how the enemy spawning end up working with or against you. But on the Rickenbacker, for the most part, there are no enemies which can randomly spawn. So in every single playthrough, you're pretty much gonna handle the game the same way. Only one egg remains. Insect, are you always this slow? Ugh, why do I gotta give cyber modules to this jerk? Wasn't there some other cybernetic agent that I could have a hands? Well, there could have been, but you'll have to wait until the multiplayer game. And yeah, just in case that you didn't pick up the expert tech implant on deck 4, you have the opportunity to buy it on this deck, and it definitely can be useful in the upcoming sections if your hacking skill is too low. In the upcoming sections of the game, we will find some more security crates, but the hacking difficulty on them is so high that you'll need a high hacking skill as well than high cyber affinity in order to have a chance at opening them, because otherwise you'll pretty much blow them all open. Yeah, that last protocol droid crate is a trap because as you walk right next to it, it will blow up open and the protocol droid will go and explode at you. At least not until it spends pretty much something like 10 or 15 seconds waving at you. So here's one of the sections of the game that definitely annoyed a lot of people. As the guy said in his email, he blew up all of the ladders leading up there in order to get up to pod 2. So we have to use all of those missiles in order to make them rise and we need to use them as platforms in order to reach a ladder. We can go all the way up on that ledge in order to be able to eventually get to the other side of the room and by doing so we're gonna have to raise all of those missiles high up in the air. Honestly, this puzzle was a pain in the ass until I figured out that you can solve the puzzle very easily by doing so because otherwise you have to do some very precise jumping as well than having to mantle on the missiles and that is pretty tricky to do for some reason so if you want to mantle on them you just pretty much have to head toward the missiles and hold the space bar. Your skill surprises me. Transmitting cybernetic modules. 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 I'm just gonna go and guess that the playtesters really did not like this part of the game. 
because they had to go and outright reward the player for just finishing this one section. And honestly, the first time that you play it, it's a complete pain in the ass. I'm pretty sure that on my first playthrough, I spent something like 5 or 10 minutes in that one room alone, trying to figure out how to raise the missiles and climb on them just in order to get up there. That was how bad it was, at least it was for somebody like me, who was used to pretty much play nothing but straightforward shooters like Duke Nukem 3D, so the kind of gameplay that you had in this game was pretty foreign for me back in the time, and therefore this was why it eventually won its place into my heart. Okay, before this gets even sappier, well, here's the Rickenbacker, I guess. Also, I can't tell but feel that the ship layout here really feels haphazard. I mean, for the most part, the level layout in Toda Von Braun was something that you felt was navigable by most human beings, but in here, things just get very twisty and very weird looking, with all of these unpractical areas where you have to jump and crouch everywhere. I don't know, it's just like you have to be a ninja in order to be able to work on this ship. That worked out well the last time, so might as well continue using this tactic. That poor hybrid's pain scream felt as if it came from something like 50 yards away, and then suddenly a sounds came back all the way back to me. So before you progress on any further, it's important that you push this button because it shoots this missile here out of the ship into some other place that we don't really need to care about. But the thing is, if you go to the other room before that, what happens is this missiles leak a whole lot of radioactivity into the room and whenever you enter this room, you pretty much instantly die due to radiation poisoning. So you have no choice but to shoot this missile out of the way. But hey, as long as the one room which is not threatening comes in first, I don't really mind it. That's another thing I don't really like about the Rickenbacker. It just feels very repetitive to me. It's like... We've got this section like four times in the level already. We have to climb up a very long ladder, and then there's a hand me encounter waiting for us at the end, which is decided ahead of time once again. Obviously, the first time you'll play it, it will feel very exciting to you, but on repeat playthroughs, this part of the game just loses its appeal more and more. So, we are almost nearing the end of this section of the ship, finally. So, might as well spend all of our hard-earned modules. At least the Rickenbacker is full of modules. You've destroyed all the eggs. Now, get to the bridge. Here are some more upgrade modules. I enjoy, I, I enjoy watching your transformation into my, into my own image. Perhaps there is hope for you yet. I can't help but be creeped out by the way that Shodan just alters these totally random syllables at the end of her email. And by the way, this is why we keep our expert tech implant, in order to open crates like these. At this point, you need an absurdly high hacking ability, as well as high cyber affinity, in order to be able to open those crates. And usually they're full of goodies, so it's definitely worth trying to open them, even if they end up exploding in your face in the process. But hey, most people will usually just save and reload the game if they just fuck up. So that's it! We are finally done with pod 1 of the UNN Rickenbacker. The worst of this ship is now behind us, and the rest is definitely going to be a whole lot shorter and straightforward. But before we are done with this update, we'll backtrack to the section of the Rickenbacker right before you have to use your access card in order to listen to this audio log I missed. For some reason, they couldn't get a hold of my mind the way they could the rest. So when I found the remains of the data wafer near the crater back on Tau Ceti, 
I didn't say a word. I just slipped it into my belt and thought, Dr. Polito will know what to do with this. And that'll be it for the Rickenbacker Pod 1. Stay tuned for the next update, in which we'll tackle the Rickenbacker Pod 2 and 3.